Hello again, boys and girls. Uh, on this little session, I'm directing this mainly uh, in the management overview of a racing team, both for Ricky Racers and FSAE in particular. And because we want to always, when we can, put a positive spin on things, and unless you're a professional level racing team where your team members are being paid quite handsomely to perform, it's a volunteer organization. So handling things with a smile and a positive attitude is always best with volunteers. You'll find that volunteers don't do very well with screaming and yelling because they can easily just wander away and evaporate. So I call this do, do, do. These are principles of race team management for the Ricky Racer uh, friends and family team and FSAE. Now, number one on the list, make every second, minute, and hour count. Now that seems so obvious. So why would I even bother to put it up there? It's because no one believes it. There's this thing called the uh, the infinite horizon and that is well if we have to have a vehicle prepared for an event that's months in the future i can't see the horizon so it's out there in infinity somewhere you don't realize the clock ticks 24 hours a day and that horizon is moving closer and closer until it's right in your face and then you don't have time to finish properly make every second minute count you should be taking notes right now when you get through watching this, you should sit down with others if they're available and debrief this session. You need to think about it the moment you get up in the morning, as you're driving to school or to work, when you're at school or work and you have a brief minute, after school and work, and when you go to bed at night, you should dream about it. You have to deal with this every hour of every day. At least it needs to be near the surface of your conscious thought. Now. Number two, another obvious, stating the obvious, keep the tools, work area, and supplies organized. Most racing efforts are young males. Young males are neither organized nor neat. Nothing squanders work hours like someone wandering around for 45 minutes trying to find a specific screwdriver, wrench, or whatever. And what else? You do it over and over and over again. At the professional level, which I've worked at, 20%, 20% of the labor available was always dedicated to logistics and keeping things organized. The other 80% was to construction, fabrication, and testing, and that sort of thing. 20% of the workforce was dedicated to keeping things organized. Now, parallel versus series in design and construction. Just like in computers, if you have an old processor on an old antique computer that crunches numbers in series, it's not going to be near as fast as a dual core or quad core processing in parallel. If you plan on making a race car from scratch in FSAE or in sportsman type categories and you're going to do everything one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, then double or triple your timeline to completion because that's what it's going to take. You have to have parallel pathways that converge at the end. You have to have part of your team doing this, part of your team doing that. In design, for example, you should have part of the designer starting at the contact patch of the tire moving toward the driver. You should have other designers starting with the human interface side starting with the driver where his hands are going to go, where his butt's going to go, and working toward the rest of the car. Parallel processing and design and construction. Now, this seems like this would go hand automatic, and it should. Logical sequences are key. If you just say, well, today I think I'll work on brakes and then tomorrow I'll work on steering and then the next day I'll think about an exhaust system. Why don't you sit down and map this out of what you're going to need first and then as soon as you get that what you're going to need second 
and look at the things you can't do till other things are done. So, do, do, do. Logical sequence. Spend time sequencing things efficiently. Here's another one. And this is where a lot of beginners trip up. Select design features of your vehicle that can be quickly done. Carbon fiber tubs are wonderful, but if you don't have an autoclave, if you've never worked with composite material, there's going to be a learning curve that's going to be as high as the Himalayan mountains. Whereas steel tube, you can learn that a lot quicker, a lot fewer resources are required. Design features of the vehicle that can be done quickly. Here's another thing that beginners mess up on. You work, 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 fatigue sets in. The tendency is, especially for beginners, is, uh, well, let's go here and do this, and let's go here and do that. I sort of know how to do this and that. Do the tendency for amateurs and beginners is to do easy stuff first. Wrong. Do the critical stuff as soon as you can, and only when you're rested. One o'clock in the morning, Late in the week, after you've already put in, you don't know how many hours, it's not a good time to be designing or constructing things. You will make really poor decisions. Another thing, I see this in FSA all the time. Cross-train your team to fill in anywhere needed. There's nothing that can be more detrimental to having key personnel and they and only they understand and can operate a critical system on the car. The more people can move around and be competent at different positions the better things will be because by essence you have to move people around where they're needed at any moment. Now here's another one. Study other vehicles in your class of course and ask for advice and help for more experienced race teams. That's right, ask for advice and help for the more experienced established teams. You'll be surprised how cooperative they can be if you're a ranked beginner. Why? Because you're absolutely no threat to them. Zero. If you're a first time team, you're a zero threat and they can afford to be generous. Now once you bring a program up, to a certain level and become a threat, that's no longer the case. So take advantage of it while you're rookies and freshmen in any case. Study other vehicles. Now here's the thing, try to steal, borrow, be inspired by good design, not bad design. This is a little difficult area for beginners and students because they don't know what they're looking at so they often borrow, steal, or inspired by poor design. So this is where more experienced people and advisors can help out here. Okay, now, here's a couple little guidelines for doing, doing the actual fabrication. They're very, very simple, and you'd be surprised how efficient and resourceful saving they can be. For example, when you have your material, whatever it is, fiberglass, steel tubing, cut up your material for the largest parts first. Perfect rookie mistake. Why? If you start cutting all the little bitty parts out of your big block of material here, then all of a sudden you don't have, you might have exactly enough for all the parts, but you're going to make a mistake in a cut here or there. If you cut the little ones up, you're liable not to have a big enough piece to make the big parts. So you make the big parts, you cut the big parts. If it's wrong, guess what? It can be chopped up into little parts that are correct. The old blacksmith and, and carpenter's axiom, check measurements twice, cut once. Nothing will waste material than a quickie, non-careful measurement, just put a mark, cut it off, whoops, it's too short, I recut it, it's still too short. I don't know what happened. And that's it. Keep a smiley face on it, keep a positive attitude, do, do, do. Do these little Ten Commandments here, your team will operate more efficiently. And that's it.